right, we're doing good today. Uh, one of the uh, things that we spoke about, that I spoke about in my presentation, first thing, was that we want to expand our partnership. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we talk about our church partners, which are working well, uh, and we talk about what we want to do uh, beginning in 2015, we want to expand our symposium. We want to bring in groups of churches, other partners. We want to make these major citywide events all across the country. And that's going to require that we have new partners. And I was so pleased that uh, during uh, this year, I think it was April of uh, 2014, we entered into a partnership agreement with 100 Black Men of America. And uh, you all know the 100 Black Men of America. It's an outstanding organization, an organization of men that focus on mentoring young people. They do a great job. But in addition to that, <clears throat> they've, uh, they have a health and wellness initiative. And uh, I would say that, uh, the, the, that Charlie Hill, we talked about the Warriors, Charlie has been very active within 100 Black Men of America. And he's helped to put us together such that we now have uh, a partnership uh, and during this year at their uh, national meeting, I was recognized <laughs> and presented an award for health and wellness leadership. So I'm very pleased today to have with us the national chairman of the 100 Black Men of America, and Mr. Curly Dossman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm also delighted to be here. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's really great to be here with Finn at this 10th uh, annual summit because uh, your cause of eliminating African-American prostate cancer disparity is also our cause. And 100 Black Men of America is pleased to have entered, as you mentioned, into a formal partnership with Finn in April of this year. And so on behalf of our entire organization, uh, let me take a moment to share how much we deeply appreciate uh, the work that both Tom and his, Mrs. Farrington is doing, and Finn, and what you have been doing in this area for more than a decade. Uh, you are saving lives. Uh, the 100 Black Men of America is saving lives. And other organizations represented here today are saving lives. But together, and through additional organizational partnerships and collaborations, we can save even more lives from this treatable disease, which impacts African Americans, as you heard earlier, at 60 percent higher incidence rate than white men, and kills us at two and a half times greater rate. And so we're honored, and we were honored, to recognize Tom and indirectly the work of Finn by selecting him as the recipient of our Chairman's Award for Leadership in Health and Wellness at our annual conference this past June. So again, I want to say, Tom, thank you very much. We appreciate the, the leadership and continue the, the advocacy and being a champion for this disease. But 100 Black Men of America consists of African American men who are leaders in their communities. We have over 106 chapters across the country and a few internationally. Our mission is to improve the quality of life in the communities and to enhance the educational and economic opportunities for all African Americans. We have a 50-year legacy of advancing this mission. And while our core cause is mentoring the 100 way across a lifetime, our chapter network is dedicated and delegated volunteers also provide youth and the community support services through our Four for the Future programmatic pillars. And these are education, health and wellness, economic empowerment, and leadership development. All of these dimensions instill and reinforce through one-on-one -on -one and group mentoring relationships are needed to help the youth reach our full potential and their full potential and also to improve the quality of life in our communities. With respect to prostate cancer, the 100 has had prostate cancer management as one of our targeted health and wellness causes for more than 20 years and has been led by 100 members and I'll just name a few. Uh, Dr. Charlie Hill that you referenced early in Virginia is the co-founder and president of the Hampton Roads Prostate Health Forum. And he's also our chairman of our Prostate Cancer Initiative. 
and co-chair of our International Health and Wellness Committee. Dr. Adewal Troutman in Florida is the current chair of the Health and Wellness Committee, and he's the immediate past national president of the Association for Public Health Administrators. <coughs> Dr. Mark Alexander in the Bay Area in California is the immediate past committee chair, and Dr. Romeo Stockett of Georgia and Morehouse School of Medicine is the current committee co-chair. These men are the lead champions of our health and wellness initiatives and our international committee. And it's thanks to their leadership that we solidified our partnership with them and redoubled our efforts to advocate for more rigorous screening guidelines for African-American men. Now, we have been uh, aggressive in our approach, even taking the American Neurological Association and the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force to task for not establishing guidelines for earlier detection for African Americans. And we haven't minced our words. We've said that the lack of such guidelines for African American men is completely unacceptable and puts us at an unnecessary risk. 100 Black Men of America has not only defended our position, we've also taken an offensive approach by being proactive. In 2012, we issued a health and wellness prostate cancer statement to our chapter network to increase their awareness and challenge them to become advocates in their local communities. Additionally, our boots on the ground, as we call them, were notified of the inadequacy of the Preventive Services Task Force recommendations and our national headquarters and the 100 black men chapters advocated for a clear understanding and awareness of the three critical elements in prostate cancer management, screening, monitoring, and treatment. We also urge the task force to focus on the education of primary care physicians on the proper utilization of PSA results and testing for African Americans. We promoted the need for early detection among African American men by starting an annual PSA screenings and digital rectal examinations at the age 35. And we recommitted our efforts on the education and mentoring of African American men, as well as other men at highest risk about prostate cancer and the importance of early detection. We recommend separating diagnosis from treatment because too many men shy away from being tested and examined after they hear of impotence and erectile dysfunction. Both of these are side effects of treatment and not of diagnostic measure of PSA <coughs> tests, digital exams, or biopsies. We will remain vigilant in reinforcing and reaffirming our commitment to this cause. And we announced our position at our annual meeting in Atlanta and also in, in 2012, and then we reaffirmed that in our annual meeting in New Orleans in 2013. The 100 Black Men Chapter Network is where our cause touches our youth and our communities. Our chapters, as part of their health and wellness initiatives, hold prostate cancer walks, health fairs, and seminars. And every time we hold one of these, we find a number of people who were unaware of the fact that they actually had prostate cancer and had been diagnosed. We will continue to increase the knowledge about pre preventive information and strategies and raise the awareness of this cause of eliminating the African-American prostate cancer disparity. Finn wants this, the 100 wants this, and you want this by your presence here at this summit. But more importantly, don't our African-American fathers, sons, husbands, and relatives need the elimination of this despicable disparity in healthcare. As we all know, this disease is too widespread and devastating for one organization to try and tackle its prevention alone. The presence of so many interested organizations and individuals at this summit is a recognition of that fact. And our relationship with Finn has provided an important collaboration for our prostate cancer prevention initiative and mission. Our partnership with Finn has helped raise our advocacy messaging efforts to a national level and enhance its credibility. 
Both our organizations agree that knowledge is the best defense against this disease. Through the partnership, our two organizations endeavor to advocate and promote common messaging and multivariable approaches to early detection and treatment. And while our partnership is in the early stages, we are encouraged by the promise held in our obje objectives which involve me uh, merging the strengths of the two national organizations to achieve a combined position and advocacy that will make a verifiable difference in healthcare policies, demonstrating that national organizations can and do work collaboratively, both on the national and local level, to bolster and leverage impact. And engaging national and community leaders around prostate health and cancer advocacy to drastically decrease the pool of African American males negatively impacted by this disease. Finn and the 100 need more help in the area of spreading awareness of the vulnerability of African American men and their need for early detection. Our local chapter strategy has included the families of our members and especially their wives. As proud, independent men, we may not want to admit it, but we often need the prouding of our better halves. To even just to go to your primary care physician, <laughs> not to mention to have that dreaded urologist give you that test. <laughs> and as uh, even though she had to leave, having Dr. Glenda Newell Harris, the national president of the Links on this Finn Summit program, talking about the role of women and caregivers in this fight is not only appropriate, but it's also superinditious. Uh, Dr. Harris uh, told her as she was walking out that I had a challenge for the Lynx today and I wanted to invite uh, the Lynx organization to become an integral part of this effort by launching a national initiative to encourage the husbands of her members, who I understand are called the Connecting Lynx, to join our cause. And to that end, Tom and I jointly offer her a friendly challenge to your uh, Connecting Lynx and that is to connect to the test. By this time next year, perhaps we can report on the increase of connecting links who actually connected by adopting, and, uh, adopting our testing guidelines. And so we're happy to help in any way that we can to facilitate the use of prevention <coughs> guidelines. So in closing, I'm optimistic about our chances in this war against healthcare disparities and inequities. Uh, this enemy of prostate cancer can be defeated through early detection we know that it will take a coordinated, a relentless army with all the ammunition and soldiers we can muster. Soldiers call synergistic alliances and partnerships with the ammunition of strategy. And I don't know, I don't have all the time to tell you about the uh, Battle of Jericho, but Reverend, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sure that you can help as a capable preacher <laughs> in this house, you can tell more about that in that context. But we know that the walls of Jericho came down with a strange, but yet an innovative strategy. Not nuclear warheads. That's right. uh, God mobilized his people, and eventually it was their combined shout that brought down the barrier walls to the promised land. So our African American brothers deserve to enter their promised land of health, of equity, and longevity. And so I'm glad that we're in this battle together and we will win. So like Joshua, let's not wait until the battle is over. Let's shout now. That's good. Thank you very much.